Hey, welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. Now, on my continuing series on making the move from Windows or Mac over to Linux, today I'm going to be talking about something that's a little bit controversial, and that is the whole idea of Linux performance versus Windows performance. Now, before I get into that, if you have not seen my original video where I show you how to install VirtualBox and then install Linux Mint within VirtualBox, be sure to check that out in the description area below. So this is something that has been debated heavily ever since uh, Linux came out and that is the whole idea that Linux just simply performs better than Windows okay now I do want to make the quick exception that if you are a gamer okay then Windows is the better platform okay and the reason is is because the software is more optimized for that operating system okay so that's one thing I want to put out of the way is that if you have software that is better optimized for that particular operating system the software is going to run better but what I'm talking about here is your everyday usage you know opening up folders um, opening up programs just day-to-day -day use okay and consistently over the years I've always had consistently better performance using a Linux operating system versus a Windows operating system okay and I don't experience the same type of traditional slowdown that you would get over Windows okay anybody who's ever used Windows knows that it's super fast everything works well but over time it gets slower okay and I'm gonna talk about some of the reasons why that is the case okay now let's start with the first reason why your performance is gonna be consistently better on a day-to-day -day usage in Linux and that is the f hardware requirements okay I'm looking here at the Linux Mint minimum hardware requirements. In this case, the minimum hardware requirements is 512 megs of RAM, 9 gigs for hard drive space. It doesn't say what the processor speed is, but that's what's required. And then in Windows 10, you need a minimum of at least 1 gig of RAM, but for most people, they're going to be installing 64 bit version, so that's 2 gigs of RAM, and then 16 gigs of hard drive space. So historically, Windows has always required more hardware than Linux because Linux as an operating system it does require a less overhead okay it is a more efficient operating system and then that gets into the whole idea or the whole concept of how these operating systems uh, they work underneath okay not to get too technical okay but there's two main methods of uh, handling files or they're considered the file systems in each operating system and so I'm going to try to give an analogy okay so in Windows it currently uses the NTFS file system and if you think about it as say like a closet a single closet where you put all your clothes in okay that is how Windows their file system works underneath now in Linux you have multiple closets that you could put your clothes in so you could see how the Linux file system is more efficient than the Windows file system because in the whole Windows world you have to constantly shuffle around your clothes in that single closet that's why historically you've always had to use something called defragmentation okay defragmenting okay uh, both operating systems do experience some fragmentation but the way that Windows works underneath it experiences more fragmentation that's why you would need to defrag your hard drive okay now in the modern day you don't have to do that really especially if you have an SSD however Windows still does automatic defragmentation behind the scenes okay so that is why in general the file system is simply more efficient in Linux than it is in Windows okay and then the second thing is the, the actual programs and processes that are running in the background or that start up okay now in the whole Windows world all of us are used to having bloatware when we actually buy our computers okay and we whenever you go to your menu and you look at your startup programs there's so many things that are running um, either right when you start your operating system or that run afterwards you know that are running in the background if you see here in my Linux startup applications there's only five ones five applications that start when I restart my computer however there are other processes that are running as well okay so if I go here no good system monitor there's definitely other processes so I'm not saying there's only five that ever run but 
compare that to the whole Windows world where you would have more than five different programs that auto start all the time and then you would have a lot of processes running in the background okay one case in point is that you know whenever you have all these programs running uh, it would slow down your performance uh, I use antivirus software as the main culprit you know and especially if you have it where it's constantly scanning for threats and stuff you know that will affect the performance of your machine you know whereas in Linux in general it really doesn't have a lot of things running that it doesn't need okay and so the final thing, and this really doesn't have to do with direct day-to-day -day performance, but I think it has to be mentioned because when I think about having really speedy um, everyday performance, that really affects my productivity. So I am more productive when I don't have performance issues, okay, or when I don't have things that actually affect my productivity. And the one place that does affect my productivity in Windows is system updates, okay? You get more system updates and more application updates in the Windows world. And you got to remember those things are running in the background as well. And so when that happens normally in the Windows world, you're going to have to install the updates and then you restart mach your machine. Now, of course, you can um, opt to not install those updates at this point, but there's some programs that really force you to do the updates, especially if it's critical, and then you have to restart your machine. So that, in a way, affects your productivity, and hence, you know, in a lot of ways, I would say that it affects your uh, performance as well. So those are some of the key areas in general that I feel that the Linux Mint performance is better than Windows. And once again, I want to say this is everyday performance using computer day in and day out. And that's one thing that I really, really loved about Linux is because it still performed as well as when I first got it. Now, I will say if you have an older machine, okay, and then you use Linux for many years, the one thing that you don't can have control over is software updates. Uh, the case in point is with your internet browsers. Obviously, if I use my laptop from 2005 and then I was running the Chrome browser now, my hardware would not be able to handle it. Okay, so that has more to do with the software and that's what I talked about a little bit earlier about software being optimized and then also your hardware requirements. Okay, so but in general, uh, consistently, if you have the same hardware, uh, Linux will run faster day to day okay so if you had any thoughts on this you know um, and I'm pretty sure there will be uh, leave it in the comments area below you know and if you also had any other details on why overall the performance is better on Linux I want to know that as well or if you had thoughts on why Linux performance is not as good as Windows I would like to know those as well so as always if you did enjoy these videos leave a like and subscribe and if you wanted to support my channel further you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors thanks for watching I'll see you in another episode thanks for checking out this episode and as always if you like these videos be sure to click on the subscribe button and for full written content audio content and additional geek stuff head over to geekoutdoors.com and i'll see you outdoors on the very next episode